I'm happy to share this moment with you guys. I think we finally have our very first Brad's Atomic Tomato ripe. These have been green on the bottom for the longest time and they've been really hard even though they've had been this purple color for well over a month. They just weren't ready but I think we're finally getting there. If we only have one of these babies that's ripe we're definitely gonna have to split it two or three ways. This is what they've looked like. They're green on the bottom and they're rock hard. Ah, yeah, about the same way. Not quite there. Those are looking good. Yeah, let's pick these guys. These are the tomatoes I was most excited about this year because of their crazy psychedelic colors, but they just haven't produced like I was hoping they would. Well guys, I have some bad news. Not quite sure how to break it to you. Rather, I'm not quite sure how to break it to myself. If you watch our videos from earlier this year, you'll see that we did a lot of planning to have our best garden ever. Last year was our first good garden on this property and it did so good with no planning. We thought if we just put a little bit of effort and in planning into the garden and we get things in the ground on time and we start our seeds indoors, there's no way we're not just gonna have an insane harvest. So over the winter, I did a bunch of research. I decided on every single variety we want to grow in our garden. I ordered my seeds. I made this elaborate seed starting setup and system. We got things started on time, but when it came time to put our plants out, they were teeny, teeny, tiny. I was looking at everyone else's starts and they were huge. So I was really disappointed. I feel like I should have started things even earlier than I did, earlier than what the seed packet said. So I was already worried because we, it feels like we got a late start. It feels like, it feels like we didn't get started on the right foot. Unlike other years, we also didn't have extremely high temperatures. So things were a little bit slow to start taking off, but lo and behold, they finally did. And all of our tomato starts finally caught up to the one nursery start that we bought. Except even then, our temperatures were still much lower than normal. So what we have here is a bunch of green tomatoes, which is exactly what we didn't want because last year we had more green tomatoes than red tomatoes and we made 70 pints of salsa verde, which is great, but we still have at least half of that. And that was giving a bunch of it away. It's with great sadness that I share with you that our first frost is on the way, but it's not your normal average first frost. We've lived on our property for I think four years now, and since we've moved to here, we live in Idaho, summers have just been brutal. We've seen many, many days, triple digits. Last year we hit a record of 108 degrees on our property, just crazy. And it, we've had really warm temperatures well into October. And here it is the end of September and we actually have a winter storm watch. Can you believe that? We're forecasted to get up to a couple inches of snow in September in some areas. And I think here on our property, we have a forecasted low of 25 degrees in a few nights. Isn't that outrageous? Not only that, but we also have forecasted up to 50 mile per hour winds. That's crazy. Jesse said this just might be a record breaking storm in the history of Idaho, as long as they've been keeping records for actual snow accumulation in September. So this isn't some little frost we're talking about put a little blankie on your plants and they should be okay and you might have a couple more months of gardening after that this potentially can really do in our garden so we feel like we need to get our butt in gear to pull out of the ground and harvest whatever we're gonna harvest because in a few days our garden just might be no more I was really banking on the fact that we are gonna get so many ripe tomatoes this year. I wanted to make and can pasta sauce and red salsa, have a ton of tomatoes for fresh eating, and at the rate we're going, it's just not gonna happen without some serious intervention. I actually knew that having a bunch of green tomatoes was a problem a few weeks back when I realized the temperatures were already on the decline. So I did something I've never done before, and I pruned the heck 
out of the tomato plants. One strategy to ripen up your tomatoes is actually to top the plant. So you look for the main root or vine and you cut the top of it because then the plant can no longer grow. So instead of producing more foliage and more blossoms and trying to just grow more tomatoes, I guess, it puts all of its energy into ripening whatever fruit is already on the plant. So I topped all probably 16 to 20 of my plants. The other thing I did was I tried to cut off any green tomatoes that I thought just weren't going to get there in time, like these guys. I clearly didn't do a great job of it since there are a lot left. I kind of did an initial cutting and I planned to come back and finish and I just never did. I ran out of time. And then the other thing I did was I just kind of cleaned cleaned up the vines, anything that didn't have fruit on it and was in the way of sunlight getting to the other fruit, I went ahead and snipped that off too. Let me kind of show you an example. So in here, it's incredibly dense. So you can just start cutting off some of your extra branches and stems so the sun, again, can get to that fruit that's trying so hard to ripen. Whoops, I didn't mean to cut that guy off. We'll put you right there. I sort of took a conservative approach since I'm not sure how much pruning I could get away with. I think newer gardeners like myself are really afraid of pruning because we think we're hurting our plant, but in reality, if you do it right, you're actually helping your plants. See little stuff like that? Like that ain't gonna ripen, that ain't gonna grow, so we're just gonna go ahead and snip it off. So that's what I did a couple weeks ago, but this pruning isn't going to cut it for the storm we have. So I really was thinking about what to do. Instead of covering everything, risking it's going to freeze and we're going to lose it all or it's going to have to go straight into the freezer, I know that you can actually uproot your entire plant and hang it upside down in a protected area like the garage. And in theory, your fruit should continue to ripen. So after thinking about it, that's what I want to do. I did a little bit of research and it's not obvious to me whether you should uproot the whole plant, the root ball and all. I really don't want all these root balls in the garage because that's gonna make a mess. And I was also reading that some people just cut the plant at the base or they just take individual vines that have tomatoes growing on them. So I think for sake of space, I'm gonna try that method. We're gonna hang them up in the garage. Eey. Wow, this is scary. Okay, so probably pull your cages off last. I think I'm just gonna cut these individual vines off and see what happens. Whoa, my goodness. I'm gonna lose all my tomatoes in the process here. Wow, good job, Alyssa. Huh, just like that. I think I'm gonna nip some of these extra branches off just cuz. I'm gonna put these guys right here and I might have some help tying them up. The other thing we might try with these tomatoes that fall off is put them in some newspaper or cardboard box, maybe with a fruit. Uh, like a banana or an apple. That's also supposed to help them ripen. I think the nice thing about this is why don't do, why not do a little case study and see what happens, right? So I'm gonna try to just cut the whole damn plant off. Yes, I definitely lost more tomatoes than I kept on the vine. To the rescue. Do you want to engage in some hack jobbery? Sure. <laughs> Do I ever? Where's the weed eater? <laughs> I know, right? And I think while you're working on that, I'm gonna work on the potato harvest. What do you guys think we have in here? I don't know, but I'm sure excited to find out.
<gasps> Woohoo! Potato, potato. Yeah! <laughs> Check that out. I need a, a bowl or something to put all these in. That's offensive. You think I'm only gonna get that many? <laughs> Good answer. Oh yeah, sweet! Check out these red Norlands. Wow, Anna, look look how densely these are in here. They're all like right there. Yeah, carpet of potatoes. Wow, check that baby out. I only planted these every six inches. This is all within like six inch spot or every 12 inches. Oh, baby. Wow. Potato harvesting day is my favorite day ever. These are pretty good size. I'm happy with that. Oof. And that's why we keep digging. Because if you don't, you might miss a few. Check it out, guys. From my first, I think, three seed potatoes, we got that. This excites me. Look how densely those are packed in there. So cool. That's incredible. I really, really want to weigh this for two reasons. One, curiosity. Two, I actually tried to do some calculations to figure out how many potatoes we could grow in that area, with my goal being I wanted to grow our potatoes for the year. I don't know, this might be able to last us a year. It really just kind of depends if we're in a potato -y mood or not. I don't think they'll last for a year in our garage, but it is on our long-term to-do list to have some type of cold storage, like a root cellar, which we might tie into our wood boiler building, or potentially a future shop that we might have where the garden is. But I'm really, really happy with that. So it looks like you got the first bed done. Yeah. That's pretty good. Minimal casualties. Wow, check these out. Man. That's so cool. I really hope this works. As you guys can see, our lettuce has been done for quite some time now. It took bolting very, very seriously. 
I thought about harvesting the seeds or saving the seeds, but I don't think I could handle that this year. We might have to bank on that for next year, but not really in a rush to pull this out. We'll probably just let it keep cooking. I don't know. The root vegetables, we're not in as much of a hurry to get them out of the ground. That said, we're going to go ahead and pull our beets and our onions and man i don't know i think really cold temps could kill back our basil not really sure what to do about our peppers i think we're just gonna pick maybe whatever can be picked the sad part is these i was really banking on having a lot of peppers this year and we just never got there i don't think we had the temperatures uh but look at this like this should have had so many jalapenos on it you can see there's a lot started there's a ton of buds or flowers but yeah, just never quite got that heat. Oh yeah, and let's not forget about our carrots. These guys are gonna be our smallest harvest yet. I don't think there's much carrot there at all, but curious to see what we get anyways. Welcome to the garden. Yeah. What Do you wanna heck, see what we did? What the heck are you guys doing out here? It's all butched. I know. It's beautiful though. Check out that. So that's wow. our tomatoes that we took all the leaves off. Yeah, that's totally hangable. I think so. I feel I'm feeling a lot that. better. This yeah. I don't want in the garage, but yeah, that, that I, looks can, like I can a, handle. A mess. This looks great, and I think put something underneath of it so in case they yeah. ripen and fall off. They don't yeah, fall and probably burst open and don't lose need all of our spaghetti tomatoes. floors. No. <laughs> Check the potatoes out. Oh, I walked right by them. Isn't that crazy? Wow, those are big red right? potatoes too. There's... So this came from this many chitted potatoes yeah Am I right that's yeah, ridiculous wasn't much at all this was a good garden i don't feel like there was a bad garden it just had a lot of lessons kind of woven into it because we yep. tried new things this year and well that's that's it but if you if you don't want to fail then don't grow as a person no and we're trying new things so this year wasn't about like crazy big harvest it was about trying new things and we always said if we get something it'll be incredible we started with a seed packet and that yeah that's awesome we also have pretty big plans for this mint here. For fear of losing it, I think I'll harvest that today and then try to get it used up in the next day or two. I don't want it wilting too much in the fridge. The cucumbers, we got a few. I'd say they're mostly a fail. And I think that's because this area maybe didn't get watered. That's the only thing I could think of because our cucumbers did fine last year. I mean, there's one guy on there, we'll pull him and we've gotten a few. And look what I just found. A torpedo melon. Nice, we got one? We actually got one. Oh, there's one right <laughs> I there. I mean, it's supposed to be like 10 yeah. times that, but I didn't think we even had one sprouting, so Look this is that. just a fail. I might try it next year, we'll see. Oh yeah, check these out. Hope you like tomatoes. I know, I do. <laughs> we tend to grow a lot of them, but yep. we like things that are tomato based, so that's more that's, important. That's more accurate. I like things tomato based. Yeah, these are fresh. Like, unless they're sun golds. And these make salsa and pasta sauce, all staples in our household. Huh, couple radishes survived. Man, these beets are all tuck. These, I did not thin, clearly. Nice thing about beets is even if the beet is non-existent, you still get some greens out of it. So the big question is, how big are these onions? Oh, that's pretty lame. I mean, that's not bad from starting from seed though, considering this was like the size of a splinter. Wow. They're bigger than last year, I'll say that, but they're not blowing me away. Now that one, that, that I can live with. My goal for this was also to grow our onions for the year. I don't think we're gonna get there, but again, it kind of depends on how many onions we're using. <laughs> Check it out. Oh yeah.
Dun, dun, dun. Holy cow. That's not everything either. No, I mean, this That's is awesome. like the end of the harvest, right? Like we've Heck already yeah. harvested so many carrots and yep. a lot of tomatoes, a lot of basil. We've been eating off of this beets. garden for two months. But I think if we had warmer weather, we would have gotten way more tomatoes yep. ripe and way more peppers. That's pathetic. Yeah, our peppers didn't that score. That is all the peppers of the year. We've not harvested any off camera. Nope. And there's like 30 pepper plants. Yeah, it's a I'm really bad ratio. And I special picked all these peppers. Yep. So very disappointed. But I think there's pros to not having a really hot summer. Yep. So you know what? It's okay. I think every year it's just our goal to have a better garden than the previous year, even if that means that we just learned a lot, which we did. We learned so much. I think too many people focused on the harvest and I think it's really easy to miss that this is a million things that go together. Like next year we can improve our watering. We know that. Mm -hmm. We obviously did a lot better this year with our well than we did in the past. Yep. We also have a better seed starting system than we yeah. did before. So everything from here should just be incremental improvements. I can't see why next year's garden won't be better no matter what. Well, we're going to start our seeds before we know it. I mean, it's yep. September and we start seeds and we might start in January or February yeah. this year, but all said and done, I'm happy. Some videos will show you, I think coming up what we're going to do with some of this stuff. Yeah. But other than that, I think we're going to put some stuff in the freezer to can. You know, I think we're going to try to work through other things like the beets and the potatoes. Yeah. And make a lot of pesto. Yum. Point is, we're gonna eat. Right, we're not bad at eating. That's one thing we're not bad at. There's our strawberry harvest for the year. There's one more thing we gotta try before we let you guys go. Where is he? Ha. If they taste anything like they look, they're just gonna be the best thing ever, but I don't think it gets better than a sun gold. It's nothing special. Oh man. It's just a tomato. It's a tomato? It's a pretty tomato. It's pretty. I think that's why they call it atomic. I don't think it's the flavor. I think it's the color. I think it's good. It's not, well, it's a, not a Snickers bar. It's a flipping tomato. Of course, it's not ice cream. I don't know if we'll grow them next year. We'll see. Sun golds are winning on every level. Mm -hmm.